All right, welcome back to another episode here at GoRails. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, using self-extending modules to help us uh, kind of uh, compartmentalize our code and remove some bulk from existing classes uh, and just kind of make it a little bit more maintainable. And uh, you know, down the road that may lead into uncovering a new object or a new class that we can uh, instantiate. So to begin with, I just have like a very simple account class here. And let's just pretend, uh, as this comment says, that after this initialize method or somewhere in this uh, class definition, there's just a whole lot of methods here uh, that are meant to work around accounts and manipulate them in different ways and such. <clears throat> um, and I have two little examples here. Again, let's just pretend there's a lot more, but uh, we'll focus in on these two. And maybe this class is starting to get a lot of bulk in it and we're trying to see about how we can break this out into smaller more manageable chunks and maybe we're starting to realize that uh, deposits and withdrawals aren't really responsibilities of the account itself per se like maybe you know a transaction is what's really involved here when you uh, are manipulating uh, the account balance, you know, making a deposit or a withdrawal. So one thing we can do, if we don't want to immediately step out into pulling out a, um, a, a class, a new class into its own right, <clears throat> what we can do is pull this code out into a module. And instead of in then including that module back into the account class, what we can actually do is we can set it up to where we can call these methods on our, uh, let's say, bank transaction module. We can call these methods on there and use that transaction module as a way to manipulate the balances of the accounts here. So really what's going on here is similar to um, like the built-in math module in Ruby, how, uh, let me open up IRB here real quick. How we can do uh, math and then call square root and then uh, I'm gonna give it a number here and we can get the square root of that. We're calling these methods on uh, this math module itself. So we're not instantiating anything. Um, so this is what we're gonna look at doing first as a way to uh, modularize some of this code and extract its functionalities into a uh, more well-defined object. All right, so the first thing I want to do is uh, let's continue playing around in IRB here and see um, kind of where we want to go with this. Let's make just a um, random module to experiment with. Let's just say module blah. And then we want to end up being able to call something like this, like we did up here. So at first, we might think what we want to do is something like uh, def self dot uh, foo. And that will just uh, print out a uh, bar, let's just say. Classic examples here. Uh, if we end this off uh, and we call our uh, foo method on blah, the blah module, we see that this works. However, um, I covered some eigenclass stuff in our previous video on GoRails. You can be sure to go check that out if you missed it. Um, but what we're doing here is we're actually opening up the singleton class of this module blah and defining methods on it and to uh, kind of demonstrate what happens here is let's say we have a class of uh, uh, Baz I guess <laughs> uh, if we try to uh, extend this mod extend blah, extend blah or include it in here let's just let's try and extend first so extend blah so we might think that we would have access to this foo method now, but if we try and call baz.foo, uh, we don't have access to this because this foo method that we defined inside blah only lives on the singleton class of the blah module. Um, so defining the methods with self dot is not the approach we want to do here. Uh, what we would what would be better or what we really want to do here is let me clear this out and hop back into IRB. <clears throat> and let's open up our blah module again. Uh, what we really just want to do is uh, define the method just normally. Uh, let's see, def, what was it, foo. And that will print uh, bar and end. 
Uh, but before we end this off here, uh, what we need to do is we want to be able to call these again, these methods on the module itself. And if we ever include this module into a class or extend it into a class, uh, we want it to be able to be called just on the class as such. Like we want to be able to say baz.foo like we were trying to do. So what we actually want to do here is, uh, let me get all of this out of here actually. We want to actually uh, first extend self here. So now when we define methods uh, like foo, this method is now going to be pulled in as a class method, so to speak, on our blah module. So let's finish this out here and say foo, uh, we'll print out bar, and end this all off. Now, if just like before, if we tried to call blah.foo, we see it works. But if we uh, open up our class baz and we extend blah inside of baz, now if we call baz.foo, you can already see it's, it's showing up here um, in the uh, tips there. If we call uh, baz.foo, uh, we can see it works now. So this is great. This is what the approach that we want to take here because maybe we're just experimenting with pulling out some of this code and uh, we don't, again, we don't want to instantiate anything right now. We don't see the need to. We can do this and then if we need to mix this functionality back into the account class or into a different class, we can still do that uh, by using this method here. So uh, with this in mind, let's hop back into our uh, regular code and start pulling out uh, that those um, deposit and withdrawal methods into a module. All right, so back in our code here, uh, let's first make our new module. Let's call it uh, bank transaction. And then uh, we want to go ahead and extend self here. And then uh, let's take these methods from our account class and put them inside of our module. And now uh, what we want to do is we want to, since we're not calling these methods on an account instance any longer, uh, we want to make sure to take in the account instance. So let's say add account here, and then we need to update this call to balance to say account.balance. Similarly here, uh, we wanted to take in the oops, account, and then also we want to say account.balance. Okay, now let's uh, let's make an account instance. Let's say account one equals account dot new, and then uh, balance will be. Let's start off with a hundred dollars, and let's go ahead and after we instantiate our object, let's check the balance. So it puts account one dot balance, and now let's say uh, today's payday. Um, so we're gonna make a call to bank transaction. And then we will say deposit. And then we need to pass in our account, which is account one. And let's say we got a thousand dollars. And then let's, after we do that, let's print out the account balance again. So save that. And then over in our other tab here, we will run our program. Okay. And we'll see, uh, we started out with a hundred. We got paid. Now the balance is 1100. So, this is kind of nice, you know, we've uh, lightened up a little bit of the code in our account class. Um, you know, debatably, we've made our code a little bit better. I don't know. Um, you know, the only time will tell. Um, but at least hopefully we're moving in the right, right direction and putting uh, responsibilities of deposits and withdrawals in a more appropriate place. And if we are moving in a good place and we decide that we want to you know start making bank transaction instances uh perhaps this is a you know we're in a rails app and we want to start recording these transactions and associating them with their accounts um we could easily convert this from a module into a class so let's go ahead and look at doing that now so if we change this from module to class so class bank transaction we can drop the extend self right here um let's set up a uh, let's do an adder reader for account and then we'll make an initialize method here uh, and that will take in an account 
and then we'll say add account equals account. And then uh, what we can do is back over here, we can drop uh, this uh, parameter here for account. And we can leave this one because we want to make a call to our account uh, in, uh, instance variable and get the balance of that. Uh, similarly down here, we can drop this call to uh, this parameter for account. And we still want to keep it right here. And now, uh, let's see down here, we want to, let's say, uh, let's break this up a little bit. So I'm going to put a line right here. So let's say, uh, let's just call this transaction. And that will be equal to bank transaction dot new. And it will take in account one. Oops. Okay. So we should have our transaction object. And now back over here, we can say transaction dot deposit. We don't need the uh, account one call again, because um, we already have the account associated to it inside the instance variable. So we can go ahead and uh, drop this off of here, put this back. And then now, uh, let's see, we should still function all the same here. Let's, let's walk through our code here again. We make a new account. We're going to check the balance. We make a new bank transaction uh, instance. We call our deposit method on that instance with an amount. And then it should update the account balance for account one. So let's hop over into our other tab here and run our program again. And we see just like before, uh, we start off with a balance of 100. We made our uh, deposit on payday. Uh, and our balance is now eleven hundred dollars. So now this is nice because we we you know we got to kind of incrementally work through extracting this uh, class out. And you know if the, again if this is a Rails app now we could have you know this backed by a database uh, model or table and we could start recording all these transactions. So with that um, I would say go experiment with extend self sum and try and you know including modules, extending models in classes and so forth, and just writing some methods and play around with it and get a feel for how it works both within the module itself and when you extend or include that module inside of another class. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, take care.